Welcome to Ross Perspective. In this video, I speak with the amazing actor John McLaren, star of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy and Star-Lord himself. How did you get into acting? Um, I kind of fell into it actually. Um, when I was younger, I, um, when I was in high school, I was, uh, dating a girl at the time who was into photography and she, uh, used me as a, a guinea pig, so to speak, uh, for a school project. And, um, unbeknownst to me, she sent those photos out, uh, to some agencies and, uh, she even sent it out to like Abercrombie and Fitch and like all these crazy places behind my back. And uh, I ended up getting some phone calls. Uh, Abercrombie actually reached out. Uh, a local agency reached out, and I ended up signing with them. Uh, so I kind of actually started off uh, kind of on like the modeling side of things. Um, but within inside six months, they asked me if I wanted to try acting, and I, you know, I was young and fearless and. <laughs> I, I said sure, and I went on my first audition. I ended up uh, booking it um, with a guy named Adrian Langley, a good friend of mine, till, still to this day. What's up, Adrian? And um, yeah, the rest is history. I fell in love with it and uh, immediately stopped pursuing anything modeling related, and uh, I've been chasing it ever ever since. So yeah, sounds yeah. like quite the journey. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Just straight into um obviously you were in uh the guardians of the galaxy game yeah. um so i was wondering in terms of the acting is it is it more difficult when you're wearing all the motion capture stuff um i wouldn't say it's more difficult like eventually it just i mean it's literally like wearing like a second layer of skin <laughs> it's right. kind of gross way to put it but um i would say that it was when i the first time i ever wore a mocap suit was was weird i would i would say that it's weird um but not it i don't think it really affected the performance you just kind of have to get used to it like it's just at first you're you know maybe a little self-conscious because it's it really is just <laughs> you in a thin suit of nothing and a bunch of balls all over you <laughs> yeah. But then it's then it's incredibly freeing because then it's you're just kind of in a big open space when you when you're shooting mocap and um, it's from there it's all up to your imagination for what, what you can imagine where you are in the world what what beasts if if we're talking guardians what you know how big is Fin Fang Foom I don't know you kind of got to imagine and make it up in your mind so was this your first video game role uh not not my first no this was my first motion capture experience. Uh, full mocap uh, or full performance as they call it but I've done uh, I've done multiple other video games uh, prior to that namely uh, most people probably know obviously know the Far Cry series so I did a little bit on Far Cry 3 I did some stuff on Far Cry 5 um, and then Guardians was my first full-blown experience uh, jumping into full performance and motion capture and all that so it was a blast though man so much fun I was going to say you, you clearly did well. I mean, you got the BAFTA nomination, so congratulations! Oh, thank you, on that. thank you so much, man. That was that was honestly the the nicest surprise to be able to uh, not only be nominated amongst you know some of the people in that room, like you, you know, I I got to talk to like Jennifer Hale and like a whole bunch of uh, Jason Kelly, like just a bunch of industry legends, in my opinion, people that I I look up to, and uh, I was just it was it was surreal being there i felt like i didn't belong but <laughs> but uh it was uh this whole guardians experience including going to the baftas and and hanging out was it's it's been a dream come true so obviously it's a motion capture role and it's in a game do you kind of approach it the same as you would like a movie 
football or a TV series. Yeah, I think so. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, from a character perspective, it's it's not really any different. Like my process was fairly uh, fairly similar. Like you kind of got to dig into what makes the character tick, what's what's their backstory. Um, so from that perspective, it's not really a lot different. And we were very lucky as well. Um, Idos uh, and the narrative team, uh, headed by uh, Mary Demarle, who was the senior narrative director, um, they kind of handed us an entire uh, Bible, if you will. We'll call it a Bible, and it was just all of the backstory of of not only Star Lord's character, but all of the characters, the world, where they're coming from, who they are, uh, what makes them tick, all, all the questions that you might have about a character was in that bible and um they gave us to they gave that to us very early on um and so i i, I kind of rolled with that so they made it they made part of my job a little bit easier and giving me that another part was um making these characters our own and they were very clear from day one i think i've said this before but they were very adamant on us making these our own versions of the characters so i i, I made it a point to kind of um uh, avoid uh, comics, avoid the MCU films, all that kind of stuff, because they were very clear on their vision of what they wanted this to be as a standalone uh, adventure in a standalone universe. So um, from that perspective, I approached it very similar to how I would any character in film and TV. It's where, where it really differs is, is how you film it. Because uh, shooting in motion, shooting in motion, motion capture land is very different than being on a, a set that you can phys physically be in and touch and it's lit and there's cameras and uh, all that stuff exists in the film and TV world. It does not exist in the motion capture world. You're just literally, if you can picture a big, massive room with nothing yeah computers yeah. computers in the corner to capture all the data but mm. that's it um you know and there's some props here and there but it's it's a very different experience uh in terms of that can that um feel kind of more like freeing and exciting that idea of like just you're in pure imagination kind of Active. Yeah, because you, yeah, one hundred percent, man. Because you're not, you're not really, you're not bound by the con, like the con, the confines of of, you know, the film set or you know, like, oh, the the counter is right there. It has to be right there. Like, or you know, there's, you know, in terms of like characters, like like Fin Fan Foom again is a great example. I don't know what a dragon looks like. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how big this thing is, man. So it's just kind of like. It is. It's incredibly freeing. And again, hats off to Eidos and um, our, our cinematic and animation director, Daryl Purdy, who directed us uh, virtually through the whole the whole project was was fantastic. Just just being given the green light to, again, as I said, make these characters our own, do whatever we want. We had a lot of room to just play and have fun and try different things out. Sometimes it didn't work. You know, there's times I tried stuff or the others tried stuff and they're just like, yeah, no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> but then there's times where you end up with something that's just pure gold. And I think you need that kind of free, safe space to do and try things to, to end up with the best possible uh, product, if you want to call it that in the end, you know what I mean? And you mentioned that you you tried your best to avoid comics and the MCU. Mm -hmm. What was your process on kind of bringing your own spin to that character? Because I guess, like you said, it's, it, you know, it's already had those, those different takes on it from various like media projects, I guess. So what, what was your kind of take on that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I think it's just about bringing as much as yourself uh, to the characters you can. And for me, when I'm, when I'm creating a character, I, I try to relate as much as possible of my own real life experience. I think all actors do this. You kind of bring an inherent level of experience that only you individually can bring. Like no one else has lived my life. No one else has been through exactly what I've been through. So I always try to bring a bit of myself and put that as much as I can into my characters. And whether it's you know, whether I relate to something exactly 
as Star Lord has gone through, and I can bring that side of me to it, or if it's just kind of creating, you know, similarities and drawing lines between like, okay, I haven't, I haven't lost my my mother. I don't know what that's, you know, like. Thank thank God, not yet. Um, I haven't lost my mother, but I've, you know, I've lost other people that are important to me. How did I feel in that moment? Like, how did, how can I bring that to it? I've, I've never, I've never fought a uh, one hundred thousand foot flying dragon before. Not many people have, but <laughs> but I've been in situations where I feel like I'm up against insurmountable odds and, you know, I can't, I feel like I might not win, but you got to give it your all. You know, it's just, for me, it's about bringing as much as myself to the character as, as possible and not trying to emulate what's been done in the comics, what's been done in the MCU before by other, by other actors who have, you know, whether it's Chris Pratt or Scott Porter, or, you know, kind of avoiding all of that and then just making it my own. Obviously, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I get the sense that, like, creating a game uh, in relation to a film or a TV show takes much, much longer. Um, do you do you kind of feel closer to a character like Star-Lord than you would a character from a film or a TV series? Yeah, it's 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 crazy because these these games, depending on the size and scope of a video game, most of them take probably I would say like a minimum of like two three years to make, oh, wow. and especially yeah, especially like a game like you know like a triple A title like a like a Marvel video game, or you know you look at like the God of the Wars of the World or The Last of Us. Some of these games they go three, four, five, six, seven years into that. Like what was it? Red Dead Redemption I think took like seven years uh to to make don't quote me on the exact time frame but it was <laughs> it's massive like these things are massive and they take years so yeah i mean i spent i got to spend uh i think it was close to four years from the beginning of the process wow. to when the game shipped uh playing in this world playing in the sandbox and you know becoming star lord and it's if you look at it if i look at myself when i started to when we ended like we would when we like when we came in at the very beginning, we didn't, you know, we we're still trying to find ourselves, find the characters. And by the end, it was like, you could give me any line, any situation, and you're just rhyming it off in, in, in Star Lord land, you know what I mean? Or Guardians land. And it was, it, it becomes, it really does, it becomes second nature. And you know them like at the back of your hand. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. Very rewarding. If you ever like watch Guardians of the Galaxy now, do, do you ever kind of find yourself like finding it strange? Cause it's almost like, <laughs> an interpretation on your family and it's yeah <laughs> no i mean it's it's just it truly is uh a multiverse if you will it's just different like they have their what james gunn has done with that that franchise is is incredible i love them i watch i watch them all I'm, but uh no it's, it's just a different universe they have a different uh different approach a different vibe if you will it's similar but different and uh it doesn't weird me out i'm i'm actually super stoked for volume three i can't wait i'll be there probably day one barring any any work commitments or anything like that but i'm i i, I just i love it all man i i grew up with i grew up watching marvel dc i grew up with all that stuff like i I remember watching X-Men animated series early nineties. That was, that was my jam. I loved it so much, but yeah, I, I grew up with this stuff. So it's, I, I love it all. Obviously we just talked about kind of the length of making a game. Um, how do you like keep it fresh, I guess, or, or does it never become kind of like stale? If that makes sense. No, I mean, I mean, I think it like, like any, any job it doesn't matter what you do what you choose to do in your career like you have ups and downs but um i, I attribute a lot of uh the game success and how we all mesh together as a crew to the people around us i mean everybody from day one and you know for me personally as i said growing up with marvel like i i could not believe when i landed this role i the I think I shed it down. I did. I don't think I did. I shed a, I shed a tear or two because I was so happy. But, you know, I think I think uh, when you get a bunch of people in a room, both from the acting and development side of things who are super excited, super passionate, um, you end up with just a big group of people 
who love what they're doing and they bring their a game every single day uh and that's what it was i i i don't think i was ever not excited to come into work every time i got to step into to the studio at idos so it was it, it made it easy because there's just there's a lot of a lot of passion a lot of heart that went into it so so there's this the scene where you're kind of talking to uh nikki um mm-hmm. kind of just like dealing with the loss of a, a mom oh, ah yeah. I just supposed to smash cakes all day? <laughs> Breaking stuff is pretty cathartic. <sighs> There's other ways. What are you doing? It's an earth thing. My mom taught me. The idea is that you light something to remember someone. To pay tribute. I mean, it's not magic or anything. It doesn't bring anyone back, but you know, it's it's a gesture. a small thing in the face of a very bad thing how how do you kind of approach a scene like that because i think it's really emotional but it's also very subtle if that makes sense there's not like a huge yeah um, you know there's no like anger or kind of laughter it's just it's subtle but emotional and quite heavy yeah i mean it- it's tough, man, because everybody deals with those kinds of situations differently, both from the the side of having lost somebody and then, you know, wanting all you want when you lose somebody is for them to come back and you want somebody to tell you that it's going to be OK. And like, it's tough, man. I mean, it, we've I, we've all lost somebody that's been important to us at one point or another. So it's. You know, I, I I try to draw in those situations. I've I've lost people who I've lost fam- family members that have been near and dear to my heart, or maybe it's a pet you've lost. It it, it doesn't matter. We all grieve in our own ways, but I mean, it, it kind of all comes back to the same thing. You want those people back. You want them back more than ever. But and and then what do you need from the person who's trying to console you in that instant? It's almost like there's not. There's not a lot of there's sometimes not a lot of words that you can really say to make it better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't sometimes all you need is somebody to just kind of sit there in silence with you as you, you know, cry and have a moment. Like there's you know, obviously when you're doing a scene there has to be dialogue, but you have to approach it, you know, like it's a real life situation. You're not gonna come in hot, you're gonna come in very tender, very caring, is you know as grounded as you can be and like you said it's 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 very it's very subtle it's very still almost you know it's almost like you're you're treading a very you know very rocky waters and the my goal in that scene is just to to make her you know feel better and ultimately to you know dispel the promise but you know it's ultimately you're just trying to console her she's just a little girl right so Obviously, um, you've mentioned the big empty room and the skin tight suits. Mm. What, what was it like when you saw the finished product and like you actually got to play it? Uh, I was it was surreal, man. So I actually um, I, I stream uh, in my spare time as well. I, I stream on Twitch and uh, I started because of Guardians. Um, I was like, this would be I've always wanted to. I've been I've been a lifelong gamer as well. I I grew up uh playing a lot of video games i i still try to play them as much as i can so i i decided to get into streaming about six months before the game dropped so that i was ready to go but it was um it was surreal man it was it's it's tough man because it's it's kind of like some people really don't like looking at themselves in like photographs or seeing themselves in a film so i'm the same way like if it's a film or a show i'm in i don't necessarily love watching myself it's just it's just not yeah. i don't like yeah. it <laughs> I, know, I know what you mean i'm the same 
so the game was interesting it's 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 similar but but different because i i, I don't look 100 like star lord but he has my mannerism and and likenesses and certainly my voice so it, it took a bit getting used to but um if i can sorry i know i'm i'm rambling here but uh i can remember and this was before the game dropped i remember the first time uh they showed us uh, a clip of a cut scene running in game and it was the scene uh with lady hellbender uh when lady hellbender gets introduced and i remember that was the first thing i ever saw of the game and i saw stoller's face and i almost teared up because i i could see i could see in his facial movements how how i could see me it was it was the most bizarre thing in the world it, it was me and it, it has my dumb little side smile that i do i anyways it was it was bizarre so hats off again i i always like to shout out the team but like simon habib was uh one of the lead facial animators on the game and and what they did in that game was unbelievable it's still it's still to this day it blows my mind it's crazy. were there any uh like scenes that were maybe like kind of awkward to film particularly in the in the mocap suits not uh not awkward uh in terms of like personally awkward or anything like that i mean there's a lot of emotional scenes which i love in the game because they touch on some really uh really heavy moments um but I, I mean i don't find those awkward those are that's kind of part of my job i think i think if anything the awkward awkwardness would come by proxy of getting um close to someone proximity wise because when we're wearing the motion capture helmet, the technology we were using, there's there's a big, just picture a big metal bar that comes down in front of you. And then the camera sits here and it's looking up at you at all times. So it's it sits kind of two feet like on your head and it's attached to you and it's moving with you. And so if you go to like hug somebody, like if you think of the scene where I'm, I'm hugging, uh, Star-Lord's hugging his mother in that scene, we're, we're physically hugging, but it's like, if you get close and then all of a sudden it's like, ting, <laughs> you, just, yeah. you like your camera's hit or something. You have to like kind of <laughs> awkwardly move around them. And then again, the team does a great job of correcting that. So it's, it doesn't look like you're like, come here, mom. <laughs> <Let me." laughs> it doesn't look weird when you're hugging, but I think that's probably the only awkwardness is just kind of physically orienting your body. If there's, you know, problems and like, those balls that are all on you are Velcro. So there'd be times where it's like you hug somebody and you rip their ball off onto you. And then all of a sudden, like their arm is floating on your body. <laughs> you have to reshoot it. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds right. Is it, can it be kind of difficult, particularly in those, like those emotional scenes where you have to, you know, get quite, think quite deeply or something. And, and you've got kind of like no surroundings can that because i imagine that helps in acting when you're on like a film set or a tv set i imagine those surroundings kind of help you yeah so i i mean i would say that those surroundings help you if you're in the less emotional scenes when you're just kind of walking around the world um because you look at the you look at the landscapes and the the areas in guardians and they're beautiful like they're vast they're huge it's a space it's a space opera right so it's uh fin fang foom and another i always go back to him because it's like dragons aren't real as far as i know um but like what does that look like how big is that like that's where it would really help to be uh not that you're gonna have a dragon on a film set but like those areas and you walk into a big vast area or you walk into this you know a tight space that's beautiful or something is going on that that's where it helps in film to be able to like look around and, and physically see something um but with the emotional stuff it's almost the opposite it's almost helps you having nothing else around you because then you can just focus you can focus on what's going on with between the other character right because that's what it's, that's what it's really about like it's about like in the in the moment you mentioned nikki it's about consoling nikki it's not about the fact that there's you know you're on a ship and there's a cake on the table or whatever or, you know finding out corral has passed away like that again it doesn't matter that you're on the ship it's just it's about you guys and it's about the characters at that point so it almost helps 
not having distraction throughout you because you just really focus in on what's what's going on between the characters you and uh kim sue were both in an episode of titans together yeah <laughs> uh, where you were murdered by her yeah what, what um what what was it like like seeing each other again after filming that or, or was did they like coincide so yeah so actually they they co and like they we shot that while we were shot shooting uh, Gal uh guardians of the galaxy right so they were going bond at both at the same time and we would we would joke i'm like i'm like how many times does gamora just want to kill peter in this game because he's just done something absolutely ridiculous and I'm like now is your chance <laughs> have yeah. at it <laughs> stab me in the back take me out <laughs> we actually shot um we shot two projects, uh, Titans being one of them, and we shot another one as well uh, during uh, during Guardians, which was it's a lot of fun. I love Kim; she's she's uh, one of my good friends. She's near and dear to my heart. They all are, but uh, I see her quite often. She actually, I think we live probably maximum ten minutes away from each other in real life. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we see each other quite often. So this is quite a broad question, but in in your entire like career as an actor and voice actor do you have a favorite line or a favorite scene of yours oh man that's tough that's tough um oh that is really hard i mean there's there's some uh there's some bangers in guardians for sure um the favorite line thing is always tough especially where it, it it comes to guardians or, or a career as a whole i mean there's there's so many of them especially in guardians we never shut up in guardians <laughs> so it's tough but i mean i mean you mentioned one of them like any of those heavy scenes were really great in guardians like the scene with nikki multiple scenes with nikki uh corel um uh, scene with drax at the rift was really nice i really enjoyed that one she also died for no reason. They just shot her. But at least she's in a better place now. Right? In Katathian religion, we believe that in order to reach Umtaf, one must lead a life filled with purpose. Failure to do so results in banishment to Sarduth. Our families have been cast out of paradise, Peter Quill, and into nothing. Uh, Jason is a phenomenal actor, and he absolutely knocked Drax out of the park. And, you know, I, for that, I mean, that, that was a side of Drax I don't think a lot of people had seen yet, so that was really nice to be able to be a part of that. Um, and, I mean, again, we were we were laughing if, if you ever have the chance to check out the blooper reel uh simon who is again the lead facial animator he put together this wicked awesome blooper reel i think it's up on youtube somewhere check it out maybe try calling it like a pet here monster who's a good monster <laughs> <laughs> why will you not yield because it's attached to a recoily thing you're sure that's the term for it yes <laughs> we were laughing every every day man there's so many just one-liners and fun times uh it's hard to pick just one perception of time is hyperbolic i don't think they'd have let it whoa i don't think they'd have let you ride them over the river what the f i don't think they'd have let you ride them over the ravine Ugh, that's a mouthful okay <laughs> How many lives is this? How many lives is this, this has this thing got? <laughs> you know, I, I always go back to this this project. It was a short film I did very early in my career when I was just starting out with. Um, again, I mentioned Adrian Langley earlier in the show. Yeah. I kind of got my start with him. He's he's a jack of all trades type of guy. He's director, writer, cinematographer, actor. He does it all. He's brilliant. And um, we did a, pro a project with him. I think it was called Chance. Um, 
and uh, I was playing this character who stole some money from uh, from some mobsters. He didn't realize he did. He stole a car, and there was a bunch of money in the trunk of it. And anyways, uh, they kidnap him, tie him up, beat him to like within an inch of his life, and cut off his fingers. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know why, but I always go back to that. It was just such a fun time. It was just a bunch of, for lack of a better word, kids running around, learning the industry shooting some stuff and it was just a blast. So I had, that one always sticks in my mind. And I remember showing my dad and he just, he couldn't watch it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Getting my fingers cut off and then I, I get, I get shot in the head at the end and he's just, he was just like, I can't. Yeah. He, no, I, I'll, I'll never forget. Like he was like, he's <laughs> like, he's like, I don't even know how I feel watching my own son get dusted. That was his words. <laughs> uh. So that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I guess it's like it's you know it's something that ideally wouldn't happen in real life. So, God, I would hope not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, knock on wood. Knock on wood. Yeah. 